welcome to Consciously Healthy. I'm Laura. And I'm Claire. And we are going to be talking about truth seeking and people pleasing. Oh, lovely. Yeah, really lovely. Um, I would say I am more of a people pleaser than a truth seeker. What, are you, what about you? <laughs> I would, that's interesting that you say that, Mm. because you've done so much work on not being a people pleaser, and also truth seeking is really important to you, so I'm interested that you still refer back to that. It's something that I do work on on a regular basis, I know I'm still dealing with it, it was something that came up this week, and it's I think it really taps into something core in me Mm. that I think I've been a people pleaser since I was a little girl and Mm. um and that's some really big stuff to break um or to change not break so uh yeah I have to really really bring awareness to it and I am a, a truth seeker I would say I'm a people pleasing truth seeker I'm a truth seeker, but only if, only if it if I'm pleases not rock people. The yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the reason that we wanted to talk about this is, I mean, we've, we've mentioned that in terms of our personalities, I am very, I'm in the kind of beige category of people. <laughs> oh, oh no, 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 no. beige. Whereas I think that you can be Marmite. So yes, I am very Marmite. Um, for me, I, you know, I don't evoke very strong opinions or reactions from people. Whereas I do all the time. And and often that's, you know, really positive. It's a great thing. You're my favourite Marmite. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I like Marmite as it happens. Um, and it's, it's actually, it's followed me around. And it's just, it's interesting because I am very definitely a truth seeker. And ordinarily rocking the boats isn't something that's a problem for me. Like I am, I would much rather find out the truth of a situation. And again, it comes from my childhood because... As a child, I actually grew up in, in a um, with with I, a lot of people have difficult upbringings. I had I had an idyllic upbringing in many many ways, um, but it but it was also challenging. And I had an experience of um, regularly of um, when the people say things that they don't mean. So I actually grew up in a, in a household. Not a lot of people can resonate with this, um, and a lot of people can't. But a household where there was, was always like a lot of arguments. So. You know, that was the family way, was we'd have a conversation about something that would become an argument and it would all blow over and no one held any grudges. But there was quite often a gearing up towards conflict. And in the peak of the moment, the stuff that people around me would say, and I was taught to do, that wasn't what we meant. So it would be, we would say, you know, say something really awful to somebody that we don't mean, which of course comes a barrier to connection. And for me as a child growing up, being quite a sensitive little nubbin, I always really felt that if this was true that what you're saying is true that is wow that's painful but actually I don't believe it's true because your behavior doesn't show that so your behavior oh I don't know I can't think of anything now but you know if um oh my sister was talking to my father or you know she said something awful to him I'd be like but but actually you really love him and so the truth of the situation wasn't being shown in their behavior Mm -hmm. and it's something that has followed me so I originally trained in theatre as a director and so you know getting to grips with what's the what the words on the page what is the character really meaning by those words what is the psychological motivation for the words that we speak because often the words that we speak are not the intention of of what our subconscious is trying to say Mm. and very and that so often happens in communication and I, I then went on to work in, with people with disabilities and a lot with nonverbal communication. So having to really understand what people are trying to express when they don't even have words. So this whole kind of get into the nitty gritty has really followed me. And it has totally followed me into my career as a health practitioner. And it is one of the reasons that I have a very successful clinic because the people, because I am Marmite, but the people who who really resonate with what it is that I am seeing when I see the incongruence between what they say and what they're trying to say, I kind of go after it. But it's also something that we do as, for in this kind of situation, in the situation where we're doing presentations and, and shows, because what we're also trying to do is cut through all of the rubbish that's out there in the alternative health sphere 
you know, and also in the scientific sphere, like what's really going on. So if there's a study that says, you know, um, vitamin C is bad for us, well then what's the real truth in that? Was it, you know, paid for by a pharmaceutical company? Was it, were the vitamins they were taking synthetic? Were the people actually, you know, ill or were they very well? Or, you know, what's the real truth? And it's something that really follow, follows us, doesn't it? Mm. However, it does also mean that it's as, that I'm therefore not a people pleaser because when I see an incongruence, it's like I challenge it. Mm. And I know a lot of people resonate with this because I meet a lot of people who have like a, a, a really um, a way of communicating that's deeply honest and they can feel that they rock the boats quite a lot. Whereas often in your case, I mm. think the experiences that you've tried to work with are that often you don't get your point across, well not anymore, you've worked really hard at it, but you would struggle to get your point across be for fear of upsetting the other person. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is, to really come from a place of truth, to really see something that is true for you and to bring it, can often cause conflict because it is, it is stirring up the situation. Mm. And I, my experience of this is I really feel when there is something that doesn't sit right with me and mm. I, I have to I know that for me to be able to get past this situation that I have to bring it I can feel the fear coming up that there is going to be conflicts on the receiving end yeah. and then mm. it's okay what does that conflict mean and if I unpick what the conflict is about it's usually you know a, a disconnect from the person that I'm um, I'm having that situation with and it's often a situation with someone I love so it's the thing I've really had to work with is in that moment where I've been absolutely terrified about bringing my truth. It's the, do I back down and not speak and keep the peace? Or do I follow my truth in risk that something is going to change in this relationship? And often, if I can, if I can put my big girl pants on and I'm brave enough to actually bring it, it does change the dynamic in the relationship that I'm in. But really for the better, it can be difficult to go through, but there's something about really bringing truth into a relationship Absolutely. that just allows it to go deeper. And I've really learned that re like relationships that are really worth something are when they're tested, they are able to be worked through and come out the other end. Absolutely. And it's interesting because for me, my journey has been to drop even, you know, constantly drop more deeply into my identity as a truth seeker, because actually what I found for myself was that I've always been interested in this sort of, you know, following the thread of truth, what's really going on here. And yet I had a lot of fear based conditioning. So I was scared of being told off. I was scared of clients not coming back. I was scared of uh, upsetting a relationship, you know, or, or whatever it was, or, or, or my friends, you know, oh, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Anything, having an argument with my partner or upsetting my daughter. And my journey, so in a funny kind of way, I was also trying to people please, but mm. from a place of the fear of disconnection. And this is what it always comes down to, you know, so often our adapted behaviors come down to a fear of a loss of connection, like as a human being we are tribal and that is the worst thing that can happen is that we are you know thrown out of our tribe excommunicated so to speak and actually that I've had to learn through a process of, of trial and error actually yeah I can trust bringing through this truth and you're right it can cause ripples mm -hmm. it can rock a few boats but if I just keep holding the truth and stay out of drama that is the key thing staying out of the drama and out of the story and actually keep coming back to what's really truly going on it's it's a really fascinating process to kind of watch mm. and now I kind of it just it's just so automatic because I no longer have the fear of the excommunication the humiliation and yeah it's a really interesting yeah, process it's a, it can be a really difficult one to really really step into your truth and it takes a lot of practice um what tips could we offer in terms of coming okay. into your truth so everybody finds their kind of their real deep truth from their deal, real deep intuition place and this is the thing when I say we're kind of not coming from story, we are not coming from drama. This is not about he said, she said, or well, I know he said that because I know he wouldn't say that. And actually, 
one of my tips i've got i've got two but my first tip is sometimes i find myself pulled into the drama i find myself pulled into a bit of the well you know well clearly that's because she's really mean that she said that and i have to kind of and i realize that's my fear based conditioning and i have to step back from it and go okay what's really going on here okay maybe actually what happened there was I felt vulnerable and the reason I felt vulnerable was because the situation that's being presented actually is pulling away my security so if I drop all of the well she's really mean and start looking at why is the security gone what is it that they're trying to bring me what's my gut trying to tell me Mm. so if I find myself going into drama I actually now know it's because it's triggered something really deep and the truth is is a really deep core issue and changing it would be really important so what i've learned to do is give myself space and time Mm. just to sit with it allow it just to mellow around a little bit that's my first top tip sit with it don't react straight away to things just allow yourself to sit and try and figure out what's going on on a deeper level and my question to myself is always what's really going on here yeah i think it's really um, really important to mention that what when we say truth we mean what is true for us mm. and I, I mean again this is something that I've really struggled with because I'm quite a changeable woman and my truth can be completely different from one day to the next depending on where my emotions are at and so it takes me a real it's like a meditation process I really have to sit with for a while what is my truth around this situation before I can actually get clarity on it because my emotions get involved and Mm. it goes up and down and so uh, it's what is true for you that's Mm. what I think we're trying to say so my second top tip is there will be a tell you will have a tell when there is something that needs to be said or needs to be acted upon and everybody's tell is different so uh, it's going to sound crazy but I actually used to get kind of like itch almost like kind of prickly armpits like I could feel my my nervous system kind of going oh there's something really big here to look at oh okay I don't get that anymore what I get now is I'll just get the same question going round and round in my head I cannot drop the question and I I literally say to people okay this question won't leave me alone I have to ask it Mm. so you'll find your own tell it may or it may just be that you get a feeling where you go yeah this, this is the path to pursue I can feel my throat closing. It's, it's, <laughs> it is very much a feeling of, of something clamping on my throat and I know that I need to breathe through it. I need to breathe through it before it'll come through. Mm, fascinating. Mm. Lovely. Well, subscribe here and we will be covering more fabulous things next time. Bye.